All right, guys, we're going to be solving question 56 from the first chapter of the Mechanics of Materials textbook by Bjorn Johnson. And in this one, uh, we're going to have a follow up question to the previous one. Uh, we actually solved question 55 uh, in like, I think, two videos before this one in the channel. So we just have a different design for the structure of that problem. And the diameter of the pin at point A this time is 10 millimeter as opposed to 8 millimeter in the previous question. So we know that the area or the diameter is 10 millimeter, and we're going to assume that all other specifications are unchanged. So we need to determine the allowable load P, uh, knowing that the overall factor of safety is 3. So we started with the free body diagram of this member here. And if you look at the figure, we can see three different views of this system, top, front, and side view. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram for the ABC member. So we're going to have something like this in here. We have force P applying at point C. We have a force at point B. We can just consider it in this direction for now, FBD. And since we have a pin at point A, we're going to have two different force AX and AY. And that's pretty much everything that we have for this system. So if you look at this, we'll see that member BD, if we have a top view of the member BD, we see that if you look at the side view, we'll see that we have actually two members of BD, but we consider one force FBD, which would be the resultant of these two. So because that force represents both of these members, or the member BD, later on, even when we are using our stress formula, we have to keep in mind that we are dealing with the area of both of these two members. So we can just find the area for one of them and multiply that by two. Or in here, you can just consider two FBD. That way, FBD would be the force in each of these. So you only consider one, uh, the area of one of these members. So it's up to you. I'm just going to go with the what we started. It's going to consider the FBD, so the resultant of the forces in two of these members, BD. So we have one in the front and one in the back, if you look at the front view. So we can move on we are with our equilibrium equation. If we just do sum of all forces in X, we'll see that we only have AX in X direction, which means AX is actually zero, so we only have AY. At point A, start maybe with A, counterclockwise positive. So we have the moment of FBD, which is in this direction. So counterclockwise positive FBD, and we're going to have the distance from A to B, which we have a 200 millimeter in the question. So times 200, uh, we don't need to do the unit conversion because it will be canceled out at the end. And we're going to have the moment of force P, which this time it will be clockwise. So negative P times the length of this member ABC, which is 200 plus 180, which will be 380 equals zero. So our P in here would be 200 divided by 380 times FBD. So we did not get any negative sign that shows that that was the correct direction for FBD. So if at the beginning we consider this direction, so we'll have two negative moment and that we've got we're going to get a negative sign in here that shows it's actually upward so that's how you can figure out the correct direction and we're going to do the same thing about point b to figure out our ay so the moment of ay about point b is going to be counterclockwise so positive so ay times the distance between a and b which is again 200 and the moment of P about B is in this direction. So clockwise negative sign P times the distance between B and C, which is 180. So P in here would be 200 divided by 180 times AY. So now we are dealing with three different things. If we look at the question or actually the previous one, uh, the question is giving us the ultimate shearing stress at all connections. 100 megapascal and the ultimate normal stress 250 in the two links joining B and D. So we have the normal stress in member BD and also we have the factor of safety of three. So we have to watch for three different things because we have two different 
pin, one at point A, and we're gonna have pins at point B and D. And also we have the normal stress that is applying on link BD. So we have to check for these three things because we have all the ultimate stress in each of them. And at the end, the lowest P that we get would be our final answer. So let's start with the shear at point, uh, the shear that we have at pin A. And actually we have a different area for this since we have different diameter for this part of the question. So we are talking about the pin at point A, which is here. So if we look at the top view, this is our pin. And the area that is going on shear stress is these two areas. So we actually have two of those areas, pi over four diameter squared. So pi over four, the diameter is what we had in the question, 10 millimeters. So we're going to divide it by a thousand in order to get it in meter. And let's see what this gives us. So pi times divided by four, that's going to be 78.54 times 10 to the minus six meter squared and we also have the factor of safety in here which would be the force that we have at a so the force that is making this shear stress would be our force a y so we're gonna have the ultimate a y over a y so for finding the ultimate force since we have the shear stress we know that the ultimate shear stress would be the ultimate a y over the area which as i mentioned we have a two in here because the area that we are dealing with at point a is at these two so we have two of those circles that we found in the previous step so if you just cross multiply this we can find the numerator in the previous friction so and also we know factor of safety is three so here we can find our a y which would be two times our area which was 78 Point fifty four times 10 to the minus 6 times the ultimate shear stress which we have from the previous question it will be 100 megapascal so times 100 10 to the 6 pascal since we have megapascal and we're going to divide that by 3 and we can find a y in here so let's calculate this uh these two will be cancel out so 2 times 78.54 times 100 divided by three. So this is gonna be 5236 Newtons. And based on this AY, we can find our P, which we found in here. So our P would be 200 over 180 times 52.5236. So times 200 divided by 180. That's gonna give us 5.82 times 10 to the 3 kilo newtons. So that's the force P that we get from the shear in pin. We're going to move on to the shear in pins B and D. So since they both have, if we get back to the previous question, we know that the both B and D have the diameter of 12. So basically they're going through the same shear stress but again here we have to consider two areas one in here one in here since this is our pin so the area would be a little bit different pi over four d squared pi over four the diameter this time is 12 so divide by thousand in order to get it in meter uh, let's see what we get pi times divided by four that's going to be 113.1 .1 times 10 to the minus six meters squared uh, we, the rest of this is very similar we just have different shear stress so factor of safety is equal to ultimate force which is 2a times the ultimate shear stress divided by fbd so two times 113.1 one times 10 to the minus six times let's see what we have for the shear stress at b oh actually we have the shear stress in all connections 100 
megapascal. So we're going to have the same thing, 100 again times to the 6, 10 to the 6 over FBD is equal to 3. We have the same factor of safety and we figured that our P this time is 200 over 380 FBD. So that's going to be 20 over 38 times 2 times 113.1. These two will be cancel out times 100. So we can get our P from the shear at pins B and D. So 20 times 2 times 113.1 times 100 divided by 3 divided by 38. And this one's going to be 3.97 kilo newtons. So, so far our P in here is lower than this. So, so far this is our winner, but we have one more thing to check and that would be the normal stress at member BD. So if we get back to our free body diagram, the member BD would be somewhere in here. And based on Newton's law, our force FBD has to be in this direction. So this member is in compression. And as we covered in the previous questions in this chapter, when the member is in compression, the area that we need to consider is the area in the middle. So this intersection, and obviously we have two, so we have to watch for that. So we have two rectangles that we need to watch for and that for that area. So we're talking about this rectangle that if I'm going to show it in 3D will be something like this. So this side is 20 millimeter and we have to find the thickness which is going to be in the side view of this figure. So this will be eight millimeter. And obviously we have two of these. There's one in the back too. So we need to consider the area of these two. So now we are going based on the compression in length speed, right? Since we have two different lengths. So let's just find the area just like what we had in the previous step, so one side was 20 millimeters, so 20 divided by 1000, and the other side was 8. So this is going to be, cancel this out, or actually we can just do 160 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. And again, we have FBD, the ultimate FBD over factor of safety. This is going to come from the 2 times the area 160 10 to the minus 6 times the, the ultimate normal stress, which we had in the previous question. That would be 250 megapascal so times 250 10 to the 6 pascal. These two will be canceled out and we're going to divide it by 3. And we have the same ratio. Our P was... 200 over 380 FBD. So we're going to have 20 over 30A and cancel these two. 2 times 160, 250 divided by 3, and that should give us the P. 20 times 2 times 160 times 250 divided by 3 divided by 38, and this is going to give us 14.04 kilonewtons and as we can see this is obviously the the greatest value that we had so far so as i mentioned we have to go with the least force uh just to make sure that we're not compromising the system so the final answer for this question would be 3.97 and yeah hope everything was clear let me know if you guys have any questions and you guys take care i'll see you in the next video have a good one